Hey guys, uh, actually I can officially say it again. Welcome to my bedroom. Uh, I've got my studio set back up in my bedroom again like I used to. Um, anyways, I'm just making a quick video here. Uh, well, I say quick. I'm never quick on these videos. Uh, but this is actually a, a video for uh, John. This is his mini Moog. And kind of an interesting thing about John is he's actually followed my videos forever. Uh, I've always seen comments on my videos from him and uh, so it's just a really cool thing to finally be able to work on something of his for somebody that's been following my videos as long as he has. Um, but anyways, I'll just give all of y'all a little overview about this Mini Moog and what I found with it and what I had to fix. Uh, this was a, a pretty messed up Mini Moog, <laughs> I have to say. It took me a little while. I had to do a lot of troubleshooting and a lot of uh, figuring out on this particular one. Um, when I got it, uh, somebody before me I guess another technician or somebody was trying to work on this one and they added they tried to add the dead zone mod but they did a horrible job at it uh, they didn't know what they were doing and they uh, added all kind of diodes in here you're only supposed to add two two reversed and then a resistor and then separate your ground and add a, a negative 10 volt line to your negative 10 volt rails inside and then you have to add uh, if I remember the value of the resistors, I think 332k 1% resistors on your summing amplifiers of your oscillator board to offset for the 10, negative 10 volts. So it gives you a true plus and negative range in your pitch wheel as well as a true center point. So you don't have any activity within the detent. Something the mini mode really suffered from because sometimes it, like on these mini modes, you just bump this wheel a little bit and it was out of tune. It'd be a little sharp or a little are a little uh, you know flat. In fact I've seen it with a lot of people who wouldn't even play with the wheel, they just play with the tune knob because it was more stable <laughs> that way. Um, so that was something I found. Um, the big issue he had though was actually with the uh, with with his frequency and, and accuracy of his uh, tuning. Uh, it was like a scaling issue. And what I would do is I'd, cal I'd turn the oscillator to 4, I'd do a calibration, get it right on the dot frequency wise. I would uh, you know, knock it down to 32, calibrate his octave uh, trimmer to make it in tune. But then whenever I'd play it in any other key, it would be out of tune. So it was like a scaling issue. If I could turn it back to 4 and it would be fine. It would play absolutely fantastic in the range of 4. And uh, So it took me a little while to figure this out. And uh, what I ended up finding out though, is it wasn't in his boards, which is kind of odd. Um, because I was looking at his boards, I was looking at power, I was looking at you know all these these things, but I finally figured out a clue was that the uh, sense line, the voltage sense line for the power supply, the actual harness was bad, and I've seen this in some of the um, synthesizers, the Moog synthesizers from era around 1977 to 79. Uh, evidently, Moog had bought uh, some wire that had some kind of contamination in the actual core and it would cause the wire to corrode from the inside out and uh, usually you can tell this if you see like a green pigment on a connector uh, like it usually works its way outside the ends of the wires uh, into the actual connector pins and you'll see like this green colored tint and uh, it's actually the wiring itself so what I ended up having to do this was I ended up having to pull the harness and actually rewired some of the harness and uh, put new new wiring in it. A matching color of course, so everything still matches to the schematics. And uh, fixed that and now it's working great. Uh, did a full calibration, recapped all the boards, added the dead zone mod correctly, um, and updated the oscillator board to make up for that circuit change. Um, but anyways, I'm just going to go over this thing with you, John, so you can hear how it sounds now. And let me put my camera on the tripod, and I'll show you uh, how it sounds. Oh yeah, one other thing too I need to mention was that the modulation didn't work right either. Um, you would just bump this pot. I mean, you could just turn the wheel up just a hair, and it was fully engaged. And uh, it was a 50K uh, pot, but they used a linear tapir pot instead of an audio tapir pot. So it was actually a tapir issue there. Um, but I'll show you all that's working right now. And let me set my camera on my tripod here. And I'll show you how this thing sounds. So as you can hear, this is all three oscillators. You can hear it sounds great. It's good and powerful. 
powerful. It's got that nice Moog, mini Moog sound now. And you can hear the detent as well. You can see when I move the wheel, you won't hear any detuning until I go outside the detent. Which makes it a lot more playable. We'll turn the filter up here and let me turn it down just a hair. So as you can hear, it sounds great. And I'm playing with modulation, but I don't have it engaged. It's just a habit out of my hand here. Um, but I will show you that that's working right. Let me go through each oscillator right quick, and I'll show you that they all are working. Let's we'll start with 32. And uh, let me get this thing where it'll kind of sustain for me. All your waveforms. That waveform there might be hard to hear. That's oscillator one, oscillator two. As you can hear, and oscillator three. Three's frequency control knob. So as you can hear, this thing sounded really good now, and everything's staying in tune. So if I go up through octave ranges. As you can hear, it sounds like a mini Moog now. It doesn't sound like a like an out of tune piece of garbage anymore. <laughs> um, but I will show you too that your modulation is working correctly. Now we use oscillator three as a source, and we'll go to a uh, salt uh, triangular wave, and we'll uh, modulate the oscillators. <laughs> That's working right now. I put actually I found you a new old stock Allen Bradley uh, 50k audio tape your pot. So it's got the factory style pot in it, um, and it was actually cheaper than it was going to be for our new Honeywell pot, which would have been the same thing. And uh, but I just got you back with Allen Bradley, and uh, so it's all matching there now. Um, let me think. If there's anything else? I calibrated your filter as well, so as you can hear, I'll, I'll set it up with. A, <laughs> Off your oscillators just so you can hear just the filter now. just your filter making an audio tone and it's it's referenced to A. So everything's in tune now. 
Um, something I love to do with the Mini Moog, and uh, this is something I've demoed in the past, uh, but I like to make FM synthesis. So what I'll do is I'll actually use Oscillator 3 as a tone source, and we'll engage that into the, uh, the filter. See, now you can hear like this, this tone. If you had oscillators, put some glide on that. So it's just something kind of cool there. What I love to do too is add just a little reverb to something like that. There we go. We can open that filter up just a little bit. different tone bank just just from fixing your filter with modulation. We just change the oscillator's uh, wave shape. We'll go up uh, two octaves on the oscillator too. Or if you want a ring modulator, we'll cut the oscillators all together. Make the oscillator three quit tracking. Tune it to what note you're wanting. Tell us what I'll say. Which is just great. And uh, of course, you can take tracking off your filter. So now you don't hear it tracking the keyboard. And that's really what makes this thing do what it does. And with this oscillator here being fixed where it's not tracking, the, the frequency is staying the same while your filter is actually changing the scale. Put the oscillator back into uh, keyboard control. sounds great. Everything's working like it should. You heard the glide earlier, but I'll go back to the glide just to give you a full range. So you can hear the glide's working right. And uh, something else, I don't know if I mentioned it or not on the uh, on, on the earlier part of this video, but I actually did replace your uh, modulation and pitch wheel as well, the actual physical wheel. Um, your other ones had been over torqued. I guess during that mod, somebody tried to do, they, they over torqued this wheel and it actually had hairpin cracks along the, the two halves uh, where the uh, shaft goes through from the pipe. And uh, so I had some new old stock wheels I put you on here for you. So you got two brand new, new old stock pitching mod wheels on this thing. So all that's taken care of. You don't have to worry about these cracking. I torqued them to the right uh, torque spec and uh, everything is like it should be for you. But I just want to make a quick video here and uh, show you that everything is working. 
and uh, a good final video to show you that you know the, the work is is done and that you're, you're gonna have a great mini mug uh, but John once again I appreciate it I really do appreciate you giving the opportunity to work on your mini mug and uh, for everybody else watching this video guys I really appreciate all the support you give me over these years and uh, thanks for watching take care